Hello and welcome to another episode of my MotoGP19 career mode and today we are here for rounds 5 and 6 at the French Grand Prix and the Italian Grand Prix for Moto3. So quickly recap what happened in the last episode, we dominated in Austin, you know, it's no other word for it, we absolutely destroyed the AI, but in Jerez there was a patch between qualifying and practice, or between practice and qualifying then I probably should you know, say it in the right order. And we lost about two seconds a lap, although it seems like I'm sort of backwards of pace again now, compared to where I was. I, I did an online race earlier, actually at Jerez, interestingly enough, and I was back in the 49s again, so it seems like I'm back used to it, so it should be a bit more balanced, because AI also got quicker as well, so hopefully it'll be balanced between us. So let's have a look at the championship. We actually have a pretty big lead ahead of Yamaha Sierra in second place. Uh, because the, the AI performances have been quite broken for the for the first few days, and it only got fixed yesterday. Basically, Garcia and Tom Booth Amos were my championship rivals until now. They've been put sort of back where they should be. So it's given me a big lead over Messia and Canit, which is always nice. Uh, so Messia second, Canit's third. We've got a 31 point lead over Messia, like I said, so pretty big. Garcia's still fourth, but I'm assuming he'll drop through the order. Dalaporta dropped down to fifth, although he's probably still going to be, he's probably going to stay there. Uh, he was just behind needs to be behind Canet and uh, Messiah, but he'll probably stay in 5th place for a move back ahead of Garcia at some point as well. Tom with Amos dropped down to 6th, 7th for Binder, 8th for Tobin, 9th for Fanati and 10th for Ramirez. Let's have a look at the Moto2 Championship. So Baldessari is winning by 10 points ahead of Schrotter in 2nd and Luti in 3rd. Marquez 4th, Gardner 5th, Talcum MotoGP. So Marquez is leading 3 points ahead of Davizioso, 17 in front of Rossi, 18 in front of Rins, and Miller, not Miller, Vinales is 5th. I, I read the M for Maverick and then just assumed Miller for some reason, I don't know why. Let's have a look at Red Bull Rookie, see how our old rivals are getting on. So Colas Tate is leading the championship so far, because they've obviously only had the one round. Uh, Yuki Kuni 2nd and David Salvador 3rd, so it looks like David Salvador not quite had the strong... Actually I think Tate might have won the first one as well, I can't really remember. Also, they might have had a balanced patch as well, so I'm not sure. But obviously, uh, Tate was second in the championship, I believe, in the end in ours. So he's going for that title this time, so best of luck to him. And shout out as well to... Let me try and find him. He'll be on here somewhere. Zonta van der Gerberg. I saw your comment, mate. You you are official friend of the Biker Gaming channel now. You know, made, made my day when I saw that you commented on my video. So, really appreciate it. And I am rooting for you now. Gotta say. But just thought, just thought I'd mention it. I uh, appreciate it. But yeah, so without further ado, let's head into the end of practice and yeah, see. Hopefully, I've done all my objectives and see where we are. Okay, so at the end of practice, we did manage to achieve all of our objectives, which is nice. We did not quite have the pace I thought we would. Uh, that's our qualifying run at the end, the uh, 47.2, which is 0.9 off of Lorenzo Dallaporta at the top. But we had a massive mistake going into turn one and that probably would have cost us a fair amount of time and you know, really push it, I can maybe get a couple more tents. So that's why we'll try and do for this qualifying. I don't think we're going to get a pole, but hopefully we can start high up and try and go off with the leaders. I'm glad that we made it into Q2 because at one point we were 30th for some of the session and then like 24th for quite a while as well uh, until I went out and did the qualifying lap and then jumped up to 7th. So I was a bit worried we wouldn't get through at all, but we did. Seems like we have similar pace to Hareth, maybe a little better. I'm really trying to make sure that I can maximise the uh, practice sessions now to get as many upgrade points, because I think that might be where we're lacking. So we'll see the AI have to fully upgrade bikes. Straight the way. So, well, I think so anyway. Not really sure how it works, I didn't really play career mode last year, so I don't know. I played it a little bit, but not a massive amount. We're going red, which obviously is good, but at the same time we're the only person out on track. So, well, we're the first person out on track, so of course we're going to go red. Regard fair that wasn't, but wasn't terrible. 
let's see what we can do here. So 47.5, a little bit slower than what we did before, interestingly enough, even though I thought that was a better lap, so maybe I'll go for one more and then I'll see you in the pits and see where we are. That's the end of the second and last qualifying session and we can finally see the grid positions that await us in tomorrow's Grand Prix. So in the end then, we did try and go and improve our lap time but we really couldn't, I really couldn't get anything more out of the bike. We are. We are really struggling here, like I'm pushing so hard and I'm pushing ridiculously hard for these corners, but the AI have really come back after the new update, which is uh, it's nice for them I suppose, we've got to just try and get off the, good, uh, off the line well and you know try and get through, but Aaron Kanek gets on pole ahead of Antonelli second, Jan Masia third, fourth Dallaporta, fifth Ramirez, me, mas, uh, myself in sixth, Minyao in seventh, eighth for Rodrigo, ninth for Suzuki and tenth for McPhee. Uh, sorry about the abrupt cut there, um, my game just crashed on the loading screen between qualifying and the race, so that's always fun, you know, it fills me with absolute confidence when that happens, but we have got, we had, uh, I had to save some tyres in qualifying, I couldn't, I really wanted to go for another time attack, but I just had to save some more soft tyres on the front, so that's what I've done, uh, I actually had another soft for the rear that I probably could have stuck in, but we'll go with the medium rear for this race, because I don't want to wear too much out. Even when we were dominant, they were quicker than us with worn tyres at Qatar. So, we'll go with the soft medium. Hopefully, we can get off to a good start. We're starting six, so it's not too bad. It's not as bad as Jerez. We are further up the grid, so we are more on the pace than we were last time. But we are really pushing for this lap time. Hopefully, we can try and get, hopefully, maybe even into the lead if we get a good enough start, and then just try and hold station there. The French Grand Prix. The riders are spread out on the grid. The light will soon go out, and the Le Mans race will begin. My sound, away we go. Ah, oh, we got the stupid glitch start again. We're gonna have to go aggressive into turn one. Look how many places we lost. Down to 16th place there. 10 places off the line. Yeah, I go a bit wide. Oh, Rodrigo. I think I've just sat both my teammates up in that first corner. We are back up into ninth now. So apologies to my two teammates, but you're both in the wrong place at the wrong time, I'm afraid. Oh, through the last corner, that was a beautiful run. Oh, we did hit the back of it, but 52.3 compared to 50.2 of Messia there. We are definitely lagging behind, obviously, after that bad start, but we did manage to fight our way back through pretty aggressively, I will add. I mean, yeah, I'm not happy about the aggression level I had to use, but you sometimes have to get, get your elbows out to get the job. Gotta try and get him here, surely. Past Fodger we go. On to lap three. Mino is next, so another Sky VR for it's like, hang on! Whoa! Fodger! Calm down, Fodger, mate. You've just kind of ruined both our races, but well done. Idiot. What, what was the point of that move? I was pushing proper hard to try and catch back up to them. 47-7. But uh, Fodger's not helped. McPhee is now in front of Fodger. So Fodger's definitely dropped back since I overtook him. I was obviously a Banzai move to try and get back in front. But yeah, it's been annoying how he did that to our race really. Kind of ended it there. Right, that was a good lap, 46.8. That is much faster than anything we've done the whole weekend. That's how hard we are pushing to try and catch up to Mino. But I think it's going to be a little bit too little too late, unfortunately. 
Bad start the last lap and we have a hard charging with V after us. But I think it's going to be a little bit too little for him to catch us. We are 1.9 seconds by Aminia, so we're not catching him. We're just going to try and bring this 8th place home, which I'm really, really disappointed with. Although we, we've been a lot more on the pace than we were in Jerez, but the... But, uh, you know, the qualifying in the race of Hereth, but just unfortunately the position is worse because the group in front is bigger. Right, through the penultimate turn, through the last turn, I think. Dalaporta might have won it, I think he might have nabbed it. Yes, he did. So Dalaporta wins, and we come home in eighth. Part Ferme is starting to fill up with the stars of the race, so let's take a look at a graphic of the official results of the just finished Moto3 race. I mean, we can sort of take a positive out of the fact that, you know, we got fastest lap of the, our fastest lap of the weekend was in the race, but it's still, it's four tenths slower than anything Dallaporta did. We were pushing so hard, apps so, so hard to keep up with them, and it just wasn't enough, unfortunately. We did have a faster, fastest lap than McPhee, which is also a good thing, uh, but... Yeah, we've been off the pace just like we were in the previous one, but that a Porter wins had a Yama Messia got Canet as well. Uh, for second place, Canet third, Nicola Antonelli fourth, Suzuki fifth, Ramirez sixth, Minyao seventh, I came in eighth, McPhee ninth, Toba tenth, and Fodger, after that stupid move he did earlier on in the race, comes eleventh. So let's move on to the championship. We do retain the lead, but uh, it's basically, well, it's lost about, I think it's about 12 points. I think we had a 31 point lead over Messiah, so he's now only 19 behind us. Dalaporta is 21 behind us, he moves to third place in the championship. Can it moves to down one, and so does Garcia once again. Uh, six still for Tom Booth Amos. Toba moves up to seventh, Binder moves down to eighth, Ramirez moves up to ninth, and Niccolo Antonelli moves up to tenth for the team's championship. We continue to lead, but now it's ahead of Leopard Racing, but only by two points, so I'm soon we'll probably lose this lead soon. Uh, uh, Best Capital Dubai are now third, CRP Green Power fourth, and Stereo Legada, or Stereo Legada, Max Racing Team in fifth place. So let's head into, well, it'll be the garage, see the reaction of the team. I think they'll be happy because we've got the top 10 finish, and then move into the career hub and see if we can upgrade, upgrade the bike any further. Today's result was very positive, as you can tell from the mechanics reaction in the pit. Of course, there's still a little more to go to make the podium, but they are definitely on the right path. So they all seem pretty happy, but to be honest, I'm not that happy. Uh, I'm not sure what the next step really is to go for this. Obviously, I'm going to try and upgrade the bike, but I think I might try messing with the setup, see if I can get any you know, thing out of the bike. Probably just give myself some more drive, because that seems to be the easiest place to gain on them. So why not? So, uh, in terms of the points, we got 640 for achieving our top 10. Uh, sixth place in qualifying gave us 400, and then 80 for beating the top 10 by a certain amount. Uh, in the race, objective again, we got in top 10, so 1,280 for that. Uh, 552 points for coming eighth. Position bonus, we got 60, so then uh, with bonus options, we got 1,746, which in total gave us 4,758. So now we have 34,677. We did achieve all of our, you know, objectives, so we now have 110 points to spend. Let's have a look at the MotoGP news first. So, here Rins Raw at Le Mans, the Suzuki rider, after the race, lets, he lets out a whoop of joy. Marquez third. At the moment, Rins and Rossi are riding better than me. Great performances in the lower categories. Victory for Baldassare in Moto2. Well-deserved success for Dallaport in Moto3. A word from Sarsamo 3. He may not have made the podium, but Biker is making a name for himself. Dalla Porta, that Biker is quite a rider. I reckon it won't be long before I'll be fending off his attacks. Mate, I destroyed you all in the first three, so of course <laughs> I've made a name for myself. Let's have a look. So it costs 60 there, 60 there. Oh, so I could have bought upgrades for this race. I didn't realise I could have bought. Alright. Interesting. What should I buy? I think I could buy it for the engine again and then we'll have to wait to get another 10 to upgrade the frame but uh, yeah let's head into Magello and hopefully I really hope we can be a bit stronger there we were good there in Rebel Rookie sort of so hopefully we can do the same again right so after probably one of the worst free practice sessions of my entire life we were absolutely nowhere near the front we achieved just one of the objectives so we're down in 28th place with a 2024 
Now, nah, trust me when I say this, there is no more coming out of this bike than the 2024. Uh, I don't know how the AI can do 2 minute point twos. I mean, we know that they, there must be stuff. We think there is some sort of bug and the jello, I mean, based on you know the Red Bull Rookies results. But yeah, the only one I could do was the track. Uh, I don't even know what it's called, the track climatization one. I couldn't do the, uh, the tire wear one or the whatever it is, the, the five lap consecutive one. I have no idea what they're called. Uh, be just because I couldn't do the lap time. But I know I did it once. I, I did it once. That was one lap on the medium tire where I was following the Sia and I was pushing way over the limit. And I did just, I did that lap. That was it. I couldn't get close to it. Uh, same with the qualifying time. I mean, it was a 201, so there was no way I was getting near that. I tried. I, I basically have been. I played the whole session and skip any of it. And I was waiting around for toes to try and get, you know, just to try and get some slipstream or to do what I did with the Sierra and follow, and it just wasn't working. And I was running out of soft tyres, and I knew I had to save some for qualifying. So, for the first time, we are going into qualifying one, and I don't think we're going to get anywhere in it. So, yeah, I might be at the back of the grid for this one. So we are here in the garage now, and the mood is not fantastic. I mean, that look at the tyre wear. That's how much I was pushing on those softs. I destroyed them. I have left two sets of softs, um, just in case I needed the tyres. I mean, that means I can only really go for one run in here. I mean, I guess I could put the mediums on, but, uh, you know, we're not really going to get anywhere with that. So we're just going to have to go out and really just do the fastest lap I can, but I just don't feel like anything's going to come from the bike, unfortunately. Right, so this lap will probably show you how much uh, we are struggling. It is it is down to the fact that the bike is upgraded. I can't I just couldn't I can't really do the lap times anyway at this track. Uh, it's a weak track for me. I could basically just about match some of the midfielders, maybe on the uh, the fully upgraded bike. But there's not a chance with this not fully upgraded bike. And with only achieving one of the objectives, we're not really any closer to upgrading it again. So it's uh. Oh great, we've got Perez coming out in front of us. I went a little wide there, but that's happened. I've been really, really pushing the absolute limits of this track. It is a really difficult track. The bike is not particularly performing. So that combination is not making it easy for us. Probably about the first red sector I've seen. Or maybe I saw I saw a few at the start of the uh, practice session because I was the first one to go out. But other than that, no. Obviously, the benchmark will be much closer in this session because he's, uh, the fastest person will be like P18 in the grid. So. I don't know. I've gone up a gear too much. Yeah, so that's actually my fault. Scarparia. That curve is deadly at Pelagio. I've probably blown the lap by doing that, but... I think it's one of those things where I just have to stop pushing the bike and maybe I'll get some slightly better lap times in, I'm not sure. Two or three zero. Yeah, so it's really good enough, I don't think so. I'll push for another one and see what we get.
line. So this one will be to a one, to a two, to a two seven. So I guess I lied there when I said there's nothing more than a two or two eight coming out, but uh, yeah, that was a properly hard push lap, and that is currently P11. So yeah, that's uh, looking good, looking good uh, now. We have no pace at the circuit whatsoever. Um, I'm not sure why, but the AI is so inconsistent from track to track. My theory is the uh, obviously the unupgraded bike is quite slow in a straight line, so I think I'm thinking that we're just suffering here more than most of the tracks. So we're now 15th out of 16. So uh, I mean, yeah, I suppose I may as well go from the lap, but because I'm obviously not going to get through the Q2. But the thing is, there's just no way going to improve that lap time, so I'm just going to have to end the session now. I think we're going to have to start from the back of the grid, unfortunately. The team are not going to be happy. So I just basically skipped almost to the end of the session. Look how far we're off. We are nine tenths of a second off. We're not going to find that, even if we did another lap. So, yeah, it's uh, back of the grid time for us this time. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't have anything to say, to be honest. Uh, I've, I've pretty much written off this weekend already, so I'm sort of looking forward to the next one at Catalonia. Hopefully we'll be a bit stronger there, but yeah, we'll see what we can do. Uh, I'll end the session. And so for the first time this season, we have not got through to Q2, and we have actually stayed in Q1. We've qualified last, so we've failed at the objective. So the team are not going to be happy with us there, but we have been exceeding their expectations so far. Romano for night in seventh and up good. So Cornfall, Fodger, Arenas and Lopez go through. But we're starting last, so we may as well just get straight into this race, uh, get it over with. Yeah, it's gonna be it's not gonna be a fun one. A few more minutes and the Moto 3 race will begin. Right now we are at the starting grid, waiting for the riders to receive the signal to start the warm-up lap. So there's Antonelli at the front of the grid. Uh, I'm more interested where Dana Porter is. He's second, so. Yeah, I think I might be losing the championship lead here, which is not good, considering that uh, it was really difficult for me to, well, to be fair, the first couple of races for me to build it out weren't too difficult, but I think maybe we can make up some positions, because AI aren't quite so good in the race, usually. Although, if we get the glitch start, there's not a lot we can do. So it showed us from two different angles there, hasn't it? So yeah, let's change the tyres, make sure we're not on anything old. I'll put a medium on the rear, because otherwise it'll wear out too much. So yeah, let's just uh, start this race. Hopefully we can, may hopefully maybe we can get some points, but I don't think we're going to. Uh, I think it's going to be a pretty lonely one. Probably drop off the back of the field, to be fair. Not long to go now until the Italian Grand Prix here in Mugello, one of the most challenging and spectacular tracks in the entire championship. So I'm revving my bike. You can't even hear it as how far back I am. We are proper on the left hand side here. Right, it's away we go. We've had the uh, terrible start again, but it's probably not so bad. Being as far. Binder has crashed, okay? It's uh, weird. Using some sort of stream off of Perez here. That's the right hand side of him. Getting side of Masaki. Just kind of forcing him a bit wide. Yuchenko's in front of us. Salach as well. That's uh, on the inside one of the Leopard riders. Oh, these are, oh, we sat up Rossi again. We, we sat him up in the last episode. I mean, that was less aggressive. That was just more him kind of not seeing me and, and sitting up. Other, the other time, to be fair, I did kind of see him up a bit. Quite, I dive bombed him. So we're up into 20 seconds. We have made up a couple of positions. Well, we've made up eight. I feel like these uh, slow AI won't be as quick as they were in qualifying. Oh, oh, oh. Almost contact with Splash, he was definitely in contact with Suzaki, but it was almost bad contact. Oh, that uh, Estrella just had to sit up. There's Garcia. Oh, Perez. No, Garcia was our uh, championship rival, wasn't he? Early on in the year. Perez is on. It's because his name is Sergio, and I always just think Sergio Perez. But then there's also Perez in here, so. Oh. Have a look at the inside of Ralph Fernandez. I think Suzaki just had to sit up there. He's also put the inside of Fernandez and had to slow down. There's Fernati as well. Just up in front, a bit wide. Please don't go up my inside. Thank you. 
there, so Fernandez and Fernandez with two Fs having a scrap up in front. Oh, that was bad. We're going to have to cut this second half. We got away with that. Uh, lucky that we have lost a lot of momentum. Two thirteen six. Nice. We lost contact to Fanati on that lap. We can't really keep up with it. Yeah, we do a two, we do a two two one in the race. Nice. I was a bit naughty that lap because of the couple of penalties there. Look, got six tenths. Uh, oh, that's just typical, isn't it? Really. Of course that would happen. I mean, it doesn't matter to me because we were going to come P20 anyway, so I may as well just carry on. Uh, but yeah. Pretty much the sums of the weekend. I was in P20 and I've clipped the curb because I was pushing too hard to try and catch up to P19. It sums it up. It sums it up. A miserable, uh, miserable end to a mis... I can't even say the word. To a terrible weekend. Just a terrible end to a terrible weekend. It's just uh, miserable. There we the go. The stars of this exciting race are finishing the final lap. Let's take advantage of these moments to take a look at the Moco 3 final ranking. So, in the end, we were absolutely. Let's see how far we we're actually behind. So, Antonelli won, and behind him, we were 23.3 seconds. Yeah. I, I did crash, obviously, and did make a big mistake as well, but. Yeah, wasn't a, uh, wasn't great. But anyway, Nicola Antonelli won ahead of Lorenzo Dalla for second, Aaron Cannon third, Jan Masia fourth, and Andrea Mino fifth. So let's have a look at what it does to the championship. So I've retained my lead apparently by a point. So I mean, there's a positive there, I guess. Um, ahead of uh, Lorenzo Dalla for oh, Jan Masia is now third, fourth for Cannon, and fifth for Antonelli. We go on to the team's championship. We have lost big ground to the Apart race, we're now 20 points behind them. Uh, best capital to buy now, well, still third. It's Sterile Garden Max Racing Team moved up ahead, again, ahead of CIP into fourth, and CIP have that into fifth place. So, yeah, let's uh, well, head into the garage and see the disappointment of, on the guys' faces. And, uh, yeah, and then the career hub and just end the episode there. Considering how today's race went, a little disappointment is more than understandable. The rider and mechanics are going to be talking long into the night so that this team can have better results next time out. Yeah, I hope we do have better results next time out. We are struggling massively. And we can't even do it. I cannot do anything in terms of pushing this bike any further. So we have lost a considerable amount there. We picked up 63 bonus points for the whole weekend. And we... Wait, what? Oh, we did do the quick lap simulation then, I guess. I don't think we did, but... Um, Alright, let's give us it's give us 10 sympathy points, so there we go. So there's a positive to take there, now we have 70 total. But there's a transfer window coming up. So... so they're just trying to get us to move teams, but it doesn't seem like a... Yeah, seems like we're better to stay with the team we're currently with, so I'll stay with them. So let's have a look at the news of the MotoGP world. There's only one Rins at Mugello. He has a perfect race, bringing home 25 crucial points to the championship. Excellent Marquez second, while Davizioso takes a hard one third place. Luti champion material, exceptional race in victory in Moto2. In victory, Antonelli prevails over Dalla Porta, the technical corner biker's track. We really came up with some important innovations for the bike last race. Did we? Did we really? I don't think we did. Doing it once the season started is always a risk, but we spoke about it with bike and we're convinced it was the right choice. Well, our bike was awful, so yeah, there you go. Take that as your choice. But um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. So hopefully you did enjoy that, and hopefully 
Well, you probably enjoyed seeing me lose for once. I mean, it's a bit of a, a bit of a change, isn't it? But uh, yeah, drop a like if you want to see more. Hopefully, we can come back for our race objectives have changed. I've just noticed now we have to get podiums and uh, first row. Okay, well we're getting fired at the end of the season, so yeah, thumbs up for me being fired at the end of the season from this team. But like I said, hope you enjoy the video. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. And I shall see you in the next one.